My name's Carl Turner. Where are you from, Carl? Sir? Where are you from? I'm from uh, Sevier County. Yep. I was raised in Sevier County. Okay. Tell but, us. Uh, but, well, after I got grown up, mm. I, I moved over here to Towns and started living over here. Okay. And uh, so I spent most of my life over here. Well, good. And uh, I like Townsend better than I do Sevier County. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, tell us about when you joined the military. When I joined the service. Yeah. Well, I started in. I went to Camp Shelby, Mississippi, first camp I was in, and. Uh, Stayed there about six months in Camp Shelby. Then they transferred me over to Camp Fannin, Texas. Stayed there about six months. Where did you go for training? Shelby. Camp Shelby is where I trained. Took my training at. And do you remember training? What it was like? Yeah. Well, tell us about it. <laughs> it was rough. Okay. Uh, well, I took part of my training there. Uh, I uh, trained there about six months, and then then I went to Camp Fan in Texas, and I took a lot of training there. Camp Fan in Texas, where I took my, my horse training. That's where I had to take my bayonet training at. Okay. And uh, had some rough officers there. Oh, you did? Yeah. So. Anyhow, Camp Fannin, I shipped out from Camp Fannin, Texas, went to overseas. Okay. Uh, and in Camp Fannin now, uh, we trained every day, you know, mm -hmm. got out and trained. Well, we did have a job too. We sorted the banks and some stuff like that there in Camp Fannin, Texas. And uh, then, after I got overseas, you know what my job is over there. Hmm. <laughs> uh, I carried an M1 rifle when I got overseas. And uh, yeah, I guess you remember General Patton? Mm -hmm. He was my general. Okay. And uh, they called him Blood and Guts. <laughs> he was about the meanest. General, it was, they said, it would have never been in the army. And he, he, uh, he put us over there and didn't give us no artillery to fight with. So they just almost cleaned us out there. But they finally, we finally come out. We had finally found our way out and fed out. When we got out of there, then we, I got wounded while I was over there. And uh, they shipped me to Paris, Paris Hospital, Paris, France. Okay. I went in Paris. <coughs> And I left Paris, went to England, the 21st, 121st General Hospital. Now, when you said you were wounded, where were you hit? There in my hand. There where I was wounded at. Uh, I was up in Germany on the front lines. And they were throwing mortar shells over there. One hit right down close to me and a mortar, if you know anything about a mortar, they sh their shells go right straight up. When they shoot, when it hits, all the fright, fright one goes up. Okay. When, when that knocked my helmet, steel helmet off, I reached down and picked it up. When I picked it up and set it back on my head, that's when that mortar scrap will come down 
and hit my hand. It paralyzed my arm here and shoulder, but it tore that finger all to pieces and in the palm of my hand. It tore all to pieces. But I tore up my first aid kit and put powder and stuff on my hand. I got sick and they took me on to Paris then when I told the medic that I was wounded. They sent me on to Paris to the hospital. And I stayed there for a pretty good while. Then this took me on to England. And uh, I spent six months in, there in the hospital there. Then I shipped out home, back to New York. Okay. And yeah. tell us about coming back home. <coughs> We come back on a ship. They told me that we could come back on an airplane if, if it wasn't over 20 of us. So there's more than 20 of us. So we come back on a ship. And uh, when we got to New York, we got to New York, we had. Uh, you know, it, they had coffee and donuts. Boy, you talk about eating and <laughs> drinking coffee. I ate them donuts and drunk coffee. <laughs> you know, I was seasick going over there. But coming back, I wasn't seasick. I was sick for seven days going across the ocean. Wow. When I come back, though, I wasn't seasick. So. When I got to New York, I was ready to eat. I bet. And uh, so they had, the Red Cross had donuts and coffee and everything. So we just sat in there and ate for a long time. <laughs> <coughs> I was glad to get back to New York in my old home state. You know, I was glad to get back there. And I wasn't scared too bad when I was on the front lines, but see the shells falling all around you, and uh, it wasn't a bit like home. Nope. It, I don't know whether you went in the service or not, but uh, when you're looking to get shot any time, it ain't funny. Mm -mm. It. Uh, when I was walking, gun was going off, had snipers shooting at me all the time. And uh, but I ain't going to tell you what I did. <laughs> I hated to do what I had to do. But, you know, when you're in the service, you got an officer telling you what to do. And, so we had to shoot other people mm -hmm. or get shot. I didn't want to shoot nobody. Well, I know that. <laughs> well, war is not pretty. And you had to do what you had to do to survive. Yeah, I had to shoot them or die one. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I know those decisions aren't easy, but you may have saved some of your 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 men that you were with. Yeah, I have, there's a lot of boys, you know, standing right beside me. I've seen a lot of them fall, and they seen me fall. You know, I mean, I didn't fall. I just. Mm -hmm. Had to get out of, had to go back, you know, to the hospital. When I got wounded there, they took me right, picked me up right then and took me on to the hospital. I don't but see why they didn't go ahead and take his finger off. I know. Uh, uh, I thought, you know, that they ought to take that off because it ain't worth anything to me. But they didn't. 
and uh, so well, oh, it's not worth nothing to me. It really been better if they took it out, mm -hmm. but they didn't, you know. So anyhow, I couldn't tell them what to do. They mm -hmm. done what they wanted to do. Tell us about coming back home to Tennessee. <coughs> You mean tell what happened? Yeah, did you get to see your family? No. No? No, I stayed I stayed in Springfield, Missouri six months before I got a furlough. Okay. Then I wrote my folks and told them I was back in the United States. I told them I was back in New York. Then I finally got a furlough and I come home. Stayed 21 days at home, and uh, I went back. Then I, I told uh, my lieutenant, I said, how come I ain't got a, uh, I said, all these boys are shipping out and, uh, and going home. I said, how come I'm not shipping out? He said, well, I ain't got no record of you. Mm. He said, I didn't know you was in North, Camp Butler, North Carolina. And uh, then they, that's where I was discharged from. Okay. Stayed there about months again. And I left there, come home. So, I'm and you, glad to be home. And you came back to Townsend. Yeah, yeah, come back to town or in what you call it. <clears throat> My folks lived in Dark Holler, they call it, over, over yonder on uh, Cedar Creek. Mm -hmm. And I come back home uh, to my mom and dad. Okay. And uh, then I met my wife there and got married. How old are you, Carl? Ninety-seven. Ninety-seven years old. Yeah. What does it feel like to you to be a World War II veteran? You mean what does it feel like to be in the service? Or in today. What does it feel like today? <laughs> well, I feel like an old man, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and that's what I am. You know, uh, I don't know how old you are. But uh, when you get 97, you don't feel like you like you do when you're 40. You know, when I was 35, 40 year old, I could get out here and do anything. I thought I was as good a man as anybody. Do, so. do you ever get thanked for your service? Do people ever thank you for your service in World War II? Nobody never thanked me for nothing. No? Well, we thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. We're proud of you. I, okay, I was married to a woman. And uh, while I was overseas there, I got a lot of letters telling me what she was doing. She was running around on me. And I tried to get divorced from her over there, and I couldn't. So when I got back over here, I got divorced from her. Then I met my wife, and I married her. So what they done over there? <coughs> the time I was over there, they gave me $10 partial pay. That was all the money I got in the time I was over there. Ten dollars. That's what they gave me. And they said that I couldn't get no more. So I got the only money I got while I was on the front lines, I didn't get a thing. I got when I got back to England they gave me ten dollars. Said that was partial pay. Then I didn't get any more until I got back to Fort Meade, I mean, uh, Springfield, Missouri. 
Springfield before I come back come back to you there. <clears throat> and that's where I stayed for six months. Wow. And that's that's about it. Okay. And I got discharged in Camp Butler, North Carolina. You sent me Camp Butler and I got it. <clears throat> and I got discharged from there. They asked me would I accept ten percent. And I didn't know how much ten percent was, so I said yeah. So that's what they gave me. Ten percent. Wow. Uh, you know. We'd see rations when on the front line when we could get them. And uh, sometimes we could get good food, you know. But not all the time we had good food up there. But they tried to get it up there to us. But the Germans would knock that jeep out to bring it up there, you know. And we, sometimes we didn't get it too good off. It was rough when you was up on the front line, I can tell you that. Man, don't know, if you ain't never been there, you never know how rough it was. And them shells falling all around you, you don't know what time that you're going to leave this world. That's the first time I ever tried to pray. One morning about daylight, just kind of breaking day, back in the, you know, where the sun comes up. <laughs> and I seen it breaking day. I felt so, I felt like the next shelf I'd have my name on it. I said, Lord, if you let me live to get back home, I'll be a different man. I got back, I started drinking, I didn't, I forgot about what the Lord, I promised the Lord. But he, he didn't forget about it. He put me on my back. I told my dad to come up there, and he came up there. And I told him to get a preacher. Bring him up there. He brought the preacher up there. That preacher stayed with me, and I got saved that night. Well, wow. And I've been saved ever since. And I've not lived it like I should. But I've been saved ever since. I believe when God saves you, I don't believe that you that you get unsaved. You backslide on the Lord. If you've been saved, you know what I'm talking about. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to church right now, but I'm not living like I should. As close to the Lord as I ought to. But when I get better, I've had stomach trouble. And she's been sick, my wife, and we can't hardly make it. Now we've been out about four or five years, but we we go to Macedonia where we went to. We're members of the church. Up yeah, I see it on your hat. Yeah, it's on my hat, and uh, they made me a hat, <laughs> put put Macedonia on it. They got some good people in part of Macedonia, mm -hmm. and. Uh, they're awful good, friendly, and good to you when you go up there. And one day I'm going to get back up there if I can ever get, so I can get around. I can't hardly get around. Mm -hmm. Of course, you know, I, down there I had him to, to come on in there and talk to you. Mm -hmm. And I said that if he wants me to come in there, I'll come in there. But if he don't, I'm going to sit right here. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you, I'm glad you was nice enough to come out there. And well, I was proud to. Me. I was glad to. Yeah, the night I got saved, now, uh, the old preacher, uh, I can't think of his name now, but he was an awful good preacher, and he's he's preaching, praying for me, and he said that. Uh, you know, I was trying to hold something back. He said, Carl, you can't 
hold nice and back. He said, you got to turn everything over to the Lord if you get saved. I remember what I, what I told the Lord to stand in the foxhole. I told him I'd be a different man. I'd live for him if he'd let me live to get back. And I didn't, you know. So that night I got saved. I started praying and asked the Lord to save me. He come into my heart, filled my heart with joy. And That's great. I, I'm thankful to the Lord he saved me. I am too. Tell you now, nothing no better than being living for the Lord. That's right. Uh, that's been about 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And I've been saved about 50 years. Good. Like I said, you know, I don't live close to the Lord, but I know I'm saved. One thing about it, I know the Lord come into my heart. Yep. I know He saved me that night. And uh, I just, I can't tell you how good it feels to, to be a Christian. I agree. You've been saved? I have. Uh, I have. Good. Yeah. See, I, I like to talk to somebody that likes to talk about the Lord. A lot of people don't like to lift mm -hmm. up the Lord. I do. You know, when I went to church up on and I testified, I lifted up Jesus. He's the man that died on the cross. He gave his life on the cross for us. Why can't we do something for him? That's right. See? He gave, he gave his life. <laughs> when I testified that there, I was lifting up Jesus. He's the man that needs the credit because he's the one who gave his life. A lot of people don't believe that, mm -hmm. but it's in the Bible. That's right. He laid his life on the cross. Well, I'm not trying to preach to no, you. No, no, I love just, it. When I get talking about that Jesus, I get carried away. <laughs> well, so, Carl, we're we're so proud of you and thankful for you and your service and in the army on the front lines. And you made it home and you've been saved. We're just really proud of you and just want to thank you for doing this interview. You're, you're a good man. <laughs>